real-time conversations take place uh, on our Facebook page. And so if you're watching us and you also want to see what people are saying with regards to uh, the conversations happening there, maybe you should also log on at TV3 Ghana. You can find us on X and Instagram at TV3 Ghana. Honorable Edward Abambiri Bawa is here. He's the MP for Bongo Constituency. I don't remember the last time I even had, had a conversation with him. It's been a very, very long time. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm great. And you? I'm good. Thank you very much. Yeah. Where have you been? I'm around now. Mm. Just managing my life. I see. Interesting. Under Kufuado. Mm. And under the president. Yes. And then you look well, so I, I guess that the economy is... It's just is by his grace, not because of Kufuado. It's by grace? By the grace. Oh. Not because of Kufuado. But God has given the president grace to run the country, or... Bella, okay. do you want us to have a program? It's okay, you let so. me move on to Doc. <laughs> Dr. Ezekiel Ejekum Obing is a member of the NPP <sighs> communications team. He looks well, so I'm sure that the economy is doing him fine. Oh. God has been good. God has been good. The government is doing everything possible. Mm, so it's the grace I was referring to, oh. The government is obviously doing everything possible in trying times. To, in trying times. To keep the nation running, mm. to making sure that everyone, whatever is due us, whatever is due the country, the young ones, Every sector mm. keeps running. I so, see. Yeah. All right. Well, we, we hope that things get better as we move along. We have just a couple of months. In fact, exactly what? Two months and a couple of days. Two to months, go for, six days. And six days. Yeah. To elect a new president. Is the NPP going? Now, I'm not even sure if I should say, will you still break the eight or not? Are you still going with that? Um, everyone, we encourage people okay. to, as we say, keep pressing one to break the eight. Okay, so press one to break the eight. Vote one to break the eight, yes. And the NDC says what? Break, break uh, the at eight this point, to break the eight. No, oh. for us, yeah, just look for the umbrella. And, ah. and just thumb print that as well. So there's no breaking of eight to reset we're breaking, eight? No, we're we not resetting. We are just taking the country away from these guys. That's all. Oh, okay. Slogans are not the issues. The most important thing is that uh, Ghanaians should look for the umbrella to be able to reset the country. That's I'm asking that because I've heard other members of your party talk mm -hmm. about breaking the eight to reset the eight and all that. That's what I'm asking you that. But well, again, the NPP see, the also has that is mantra. That let's not confuse our voters mm. with all these slogans. They I should see. just look for the umbrella and turn number one. <laughs> number one, number eight. Well, um, we're also expecting Nana Yasapon. He is a political aide to Alan Chiamanti, Movement for Change. And they are saying that they are the refreshment party, so number, number 13 item 13. So uh, we hope that he joins us shortly. <laughs> but the PURC has announced that starting today, electricity and water tariffs will go up by 3.02% and 1.8% respectively. And they've given reasons as to why this is happening. In fact, they are saying that um, the number of reasons why they are increasing this is because of domestic inflation rate, the US dollar Ghana city exchange rate, cost of natural gas, electricity generation uh, mix amongst others, which is why they're increasing tariffs. I'll give you a, a breakdown of how many times we've already had um, electricity and water tariff increments in the year. In fact, the first quarter, there was a downward review of tariffs. But right after that, we've had about three increments so far. In fact, last month, we're actually paying a little more than we were the month before, and now we have to pay even extra. Let's take a look at um, a story put together by one of our colleagues, uh, trying to find out how business owners are taking the news. And after that, we'll hear from Duncan Amwa, he's the executive director of COPEC, who's also not too excited about the news, as expected. Take a look. 150. Yeah, <laughs> So what uh, Auntie Anisna is saying is the increment will really be a problem. For instance, if this is going for one city, 50 pesos, it means that residents will not be coming here, consumers will not be coming to buy water, and she'll also be losing it at the end. We will increase, we put some market, we put some money on, on our market in order to meet up. Because without putting in money, it will affect our business. I also have a thing. Because Alfred, what we know, uh, is that if you take the last time the PURC did any adjustment uh, just about two months ago, uh, the city was exchanging uh, to the dollar around 
Today is around 16.2 um, average market. Uh, what we would have uh, thought would also influence that decision uh, is the cost of fuel, particularly for the power sector. And so if you have a situation where uh, average fuel prices that were hovering around 14.9, 14.8, 15 Ghana a liter, uh, is today selling around uh, 12.45. Uh, one would have expected that the cost of fuel, uh, particularly gas also, uh, would have influenced um, the pricing of uh, power particularly. Unfortunately, uh, power rather saw a 3% jump, whilst water, uh, whose treatment has in recent times come under huge uh, scrutiny and debate, due to the Galamse menace, uh, rather so a 1%. So uh, whatever I recognize that the PURC is actually working with uh, should be an interesting one. Uh, but to uh, the everyday mind like mine, uh, our expectation would have been that maybe the cost of water would have rather gone up uh, due to the surge in Galamse, uh, I mean, uh, business. and. And that's the executive director of COPEC, Mr. Duncan Amwa. But let me run you through what's happened so far this year. At the beginning of the year, there was a downward review of um, tariffs in the country. In fact, I'll just read a bit of it. It says that having considered all the underlying factors, the commission wishes to announce that there will be no change in the electricity tariffs for lifeline consumers that zero to 30 kilowatts per hour, as well as for residential consumers within the consumption brackets of zero to 300 kilowatts per hour. There will, however, be an average reduction in electricity tariffs of 6.56% for residential consumers within the consumption bracket of 301 kilowatts per hour. And tariffs within zero to 300 for non-residential class of consumers remains the same with no change in their rates. However, consumers within 301 and above will experience an average reduction of 4.98. And then water uh, was also going to remain the same. That was as of February this year. And they said it was going to be for the first quarter review. However, in July, electricity and home use increased by 3.45% uh, for small-scale consumers. That's zero to 30 kilowatts per hour, at least 31 kilowatts per hour and upwards. There was a review of up to 5.8%. And then industrial electricity, 4.92%. Water went up by 5.16%. And then in September as well, we had an increment that took place September 1. Electricity went up by 7%, water by 6.7%. It was announced by the chairman of the PRC. And in fact, with water, his concern was uh, the cost of treatment um, of water, which is why they had to review. And then in October, we're told that it's also going up again uh, by 3.02% for electricity and water by 1.86%. You heard Duncan Amwa indicating that he expected water to be much higher than electricity. But we also know the reasons why electricity has gone up per the PRC. Let's get into that conversation. But let me say good morning to Nanayao, who's just joined us. I hope you're well. You're very well, yes, sir. All right, I'm good. Thank you very and much. Then... I told them about item 13. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, congratulations. Of course, with your 27th anniversary, definitely you would be having some item 13 around. And um, uh, it's good. We will be having. But you are yeah. the item 13 party, so I thought you would bring us some goodies. When you, when you said you were going to Kempinski, what was going to happen? Oh, that one, I was just saying it. Uh, of course, sponsored there, there, by... There will definitely be an item. Alan Cash, there. oh. Of course, we are always ready to sponsor anything that has positive impact I see. on Ghanaians. Anyway, let me start off with you, um, Mr. Edward Bauer. What are your thoughts on this? New month, new charges. Uh, thank you very much and good morning to your viewers. And then, uh, congratulations. Happy birthday. Thank you. Um... I think that basically uh, PURC as a financial regulator of the energy sector um, and of course uh, the water sector, they are mandated by law to on quarterly basis do what we call tariff adjustments. Mm. They do that based on the parameters that feed into the tariff structure. Even though they usually will have some number of years, they will have what we call the major tariff uh, review. But in between the major tariff reviews, they have these quarterly adjustments. And that is supposed to ensure that one, there's cost reflective uh, tariff. In that if you, you spend X amount of money to produce 
Y amount of energy or water. Mm -hmm. At least you should get your X. That's what it simply means. Mm -hmm. So that you don't, for any business person or for anything, you need to meet that. If you cannot meet that cost reflective tariff, then government must provide a budget allocation mm -hmm. to subsidize that. Because the businesses must stay still operate. So that is basically the, the issue. If you look at PURC, and again, before I even come to what the reasons PURC gave, Bella, you must also understand that um, the IMF had indicated very clearly that the greatest threat to our economy was uh, the energy sector because it was piling up debt because of under recoveries. Mm. Under recovery simply means that, that just if this cost of reflecting, it doesn't, you don't get that. Any delta that you get, any differential that comes, it becomes an under recovery, it becomes a liability that somebody has to pay for it. And so they had indicated that. And as we speak now, even if you just take the energy sector alone, to be able to even let the energy sector be viable and stay just afloat, you need not less than $2 billion to flush the pipe. So that is the situation. Two million. Two, mil two billion. Two billion okay. dollars to flush the pipe, not to just like make them good, but at least to let them stay afloat. You need that, and government has to find that money. Now, go back to the PRC statement that they issued. They said that they took this decision, taking cognizance of the macroeconomic conditions of the country, mm -hmm. and two, they also realized that government had to free itself of the burden of having to subsidize the regulated electricity market, and that of the natural gas. So if government has to free itself, and of course the reason why these two factors have been mentioned is because they are the conditionalities that have been imposed on the state by virtue of us accessing that IMF, uh, what they call it, support uh, program that we are in now. So the question you then ask yourself, why have, are we here? Look, I think Duncan captured it in a very simple manner. <laughs> You have a situation where your CD is simply underperforming against the major currency, and particularly against the dollar. So anytime, let me just give you a very simple scenario. Take ECG. ECG has to, you know, when you go and buy your electricity, so you have, uh, what do you call it? You pay for the fuel. Fuel is a pass-through cost. When I say pass-through cost, means that the tariff that you go to pay, the, when you go and buy, say, 100 Ghana CDs, a component of it is for fuel the fuel that is used in generating the power. So ECG, for example, um, has to account for that fuel because they finally sell the product to you and collect the money. If you look at, as a country, we have a deficit of about 50 million scarf of gas that we cannot get, either from Nigeria or even from our own indigenous gas. And so what it then simply means is that we need to augment that figure, uh, that uh, uh, shortfall, mm. with light crude oil, LCO. On a monthly basis, our bill that is incurred by ECG is $40 million. $40 million. Let me be very generous and make an exchange rate of 1 to 10. So that would mean that for every month, ECG has to vomit out 400 million Ghana cities to buy light crude oil. So they buy light crude oil, and then they produce the power. Mm -hmm. They sell it to you and I. At the time they are collecting their monies, the city depreciates. You understand the point mm -hmm. So he collects the money. He has to go and buy another forty million dollars worth of crude the following month. But because the city has depreciated, now he doesn't need four hundred million, but he needs more than four hundred million to be able to buy the same amount of crude. That amount has to be paid by somebody, and that is why ECG then puts that uh, sorry PURC puts that through the tariff for you and I to pay, and that is why you have an increment. So why should we be the one paying for? You that? have to pay for it because there are two options. Mm -hmm. The first option is that government, who is the reason for which our city is not performing, would have to make a budget allocation to do that. Mm -hmm. Government currently cannot do that, one, because you are broken, two, because ECG, sorry, IMF, I've told them that you cannot, if you will have to continuously access this particular support from us, you cannot subsidize it. And so if the parameter, if the variables change, they must reflect in the cost. Mm. Are you getting the point mm -hmm. I'm making? Mm -hmm. So... Unfortunately, you and I have to pay for it. So that is the challenge. Two, the part that is a bit disheartening is that in the current, in the current uh, what do you call it, increment, you look at the lifeline consumers. Yeah. And you see, I'll, I'll come to even with your 301 to what I'll call it, but that lifeline 
consumer. You know who the lifeline consumers are? Those who just use bulb. Mm. And, one and, fan. and maybe a fan. Mm. They are the lifeline. Unfortunately for them, they have had their increment move from almost 66 per kilowatt hour mm -hmm. to around 68, because it's 67 point something. That's it, best Yes. Okay. I get the point. Mm -hmm. It has moved from around 66, well, it's 65 point something, yeah. to 67 point something. And these are people who either are unemployed, they live heavily below the poverty line, they simply cannot guarantee three square meals, and they have been asked to cough up money again, additional money for their energy cost and their energy requirements. These are the type of people we are talking about. The expectation is that even under any policy, in any IMF policy, under any World Bank policy, there has always been the whole idea of safety net for people who simply cannot afford. That whilst you want to make cost recovery, find a way of cushioning these people so that they don't just disappear from this earth. Because if they are below the poverty line, the challenge is then is that this thing is even going to make their cases worse. So there's a threshold for the lifeline consumers. Yeah, the threshold is that they shouldn't consume more than 300. Uh, but, but in terms of how much they should pay, is there also a threshold for that? So that because you're saying it was 65 before and now it's 68, and that's a No, there's no threshold. So for you see, for, for PURC, there's a tariff structure. Mm -hmm. There's a guideline for forming the structure. All they do is to plug in the figures and they chance out their tariff. All, okay. But government can say, okay, I am responsible for the the, the welfare of Ghanaians. Even Jesus Christ said, remember the poor shall be with you. Why did he say that? He said that because there are certain people that society must consciously make an effort to protect. And these are the vulnerable. And so government can tell itself that, look, irrespective of this whole idea of this IMF program, this are a group of people who simply cannot even survive. Now, for this increment, I can look at the figure that is involved and say, I will cushion these people. Mm. Are you getting the mm -hmm. drift I'm making? Mm -hmm. So that is one aspect that you look, you look at and then you, you, you deal with it. Okay. But you see, I've, I've heard people make statements and they say that, oh, you see, it is a situation that we find ourselves in. It is the what and what. And they try to rationalize some of this behavior. Mm -hmm. I will always want us to zero down this to the issue of irresponsibility. On and that, part? On the part of government. You see, you have a social contract with the people to ensure that I am supposed to make your life comfortable. I'm supposed to ensure that everything that you do, you do it well. Now you have a situation, for example, businesses. Any time, you know, for a businessman, he is not there because of charity. Mm. Any time there is a change in the cost of doing business, the businessman is not going to shoulder that. The businessman will definitely transfer that to you, the of a uh, final consumer because he's not there to do some church work he's not there to do some foundation work he is there to make money and so if he has to make money he sits down and he tells you that look my energy cost for this month he say is x mm. suddenly because of purc's review of the tariff now it is x plus one that plus one he's not going to bear it he is going to let it be a pass through so you will have to pay so it goes back again to the situation that Irrespective of even having to pay for higher in, uh, energy costs, even for the vulnerable and whatever the class of people that you have, you also have a situation where when you then go to buy items, there's also going to be an increment because of the fact that anybody who, for example, is reliant on energy to do something would have to deal with it. Look, a common barber, and I use the word common because, for me. Mm. Yeah, because of the fact that he, may. he uses electricity to be able to barber my hair. You're stylish in your saloon. Use electricity to do your dryers and other mm. things. An increment in this simply means that his, 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 his what do you call it, his energy cost is going to go up. Bella, she's not going to say, oh, because I know you, Bella, I will not do that. You definitely will want to increase it. This is the effect of what we have. And it is it boils down to poor management of the economy. It boils down to irresponsibility. And it boils down to, to a very large extent, corruption. Dr. Jukum, do you accept this tag of irresponsibility? Poor management of the economy being the reason why we're here today. Uh, congratulations to your media house on the milestone. If, if Honorable should say this, then clearly it's what rings in my mind is perhaps what Ghanaians um, largely experienced under the NDC. I mean, no one is very much happy when there is any form of increments. 
be it even 0 0.1. So if I used to pay 100 CDs monthly for electricity, the increment presupposes that I'm going to cough extra three CDs. No matter how minute or monumental it is, it's an increment. So to a large extent, we empathize with the people of Ghana who would have to even cough, even if it's a Pessoa, mm. then clearly it's going to be an additional cost to the person. To anyone doing any form of business at all, be it small, medium, or large scale enterprise, mm -hmm. clearly the cost of doing business is going to go high. And like Honorable rightly said, the replication is that the consumer, the final consumer, would have to pay for such increments in production. But to situate the argument on the assumption that there is some form of irresponsibility, then Honorable is just trying to tell us that, quote and unquote, they are much more irresponsible. Because if you look at the yearly annual, I mean, average increments of electricity, for example, under the NDC, we are not doing less than 50% per year. With all the increments and war that you've read to us, I mean, from the start of the show, mm -hmm. what we have done, which even with that, we, we, we wish we could have done better, that we're doing 11% annual increments. Like I said, even if it's 1%, it's an increment. So if it's a matter of irresponsibility, the Honorable is just trying to tell us that perhaps the NDC was much more irresponsible. But we are not going on the tangent of who is more irresponsible. Have you not done we that are, already? No, by I saying... was just trying to draw Honorable's attention to what the statement he made. But we are not going on that tangent to say who was more irresponsible. What is important is that the environment of doing business, people's conditions, people's lives are bettered. At least today, we can boast of the fact that mm -hmm. the barber Honorable referred to wouldn't have to pay for fuel, either diesel or petrol, to power some generator mm. to be able to get opportunity to at least get energy. Doc, you're fix, saying this based on what? Because as far as I'm concerned, for me, Doomso mm. is back. To, I've had light off back to, Bella, to back. Doomso is back. And I'm not the only one. At, My hairdresser at, has been complaining. At, at any point now in she's time, looking for ways to even at, go and buy a generator. At, at any point in time, at any point in time, we've had some difficulties with power fluctuations <laughs> and all that. I'm referring to the monumental visitation of Doomso under Honorable's regime. So yes. Looking at even the erratic supply of power mm -hmm. as we are experiencing now, from what you say, look at the effect of that and compare to what we experienced under the NDC. What I'm saying is that largely, under this, in quote, irresponsible government, honorable ones have to believe, mm. this irresponsible government has been able to provide light for a period of seven and a half years. We've had some periods where we had challenges, especially the 10, you know, 2023 into. 2024, mm. clearly we saw some difficulties with the power sector. Mm -hmm. But all in all, averagely, the lights have been kept on. So that barber who would have to increase his cost, who would have to increase the pricing of his services, that barber is fair, better off today because yeah, that person does not have to go get a um, generator set and buy extra fuel to make sure he has light. But that's what fix, I'm telling you, that fix, people have had to, to buy generators. People have to, have to buy generators because compared, Jumso to, is back. compared to the four years of darkness. We, no, we, but that's we, we why they were voted. And in fact, a viewer was saying, I should read this to you. Mauli mm. Kofi Akwe says that, Bella, tell the doctor that we voted NDC out mm. because they promised us better. MPP promised us better. The better and so is if that, we the, come back the, with the equalization. Is that, I'm not equalizing. The better is that within the seven and a half years, you've had stable electricity <clears throat> supply. Barring all the challenges we've had, the lights have been kept on. So to me, and to my friend, who also cuts my hair or barbers my hair, mm. he can attest to it that he, the, the cost of his business, doing his business, is much more relatively lower than he used to. Because in the past, we were told if you want to enjoy electricity, mm. you should be prepared to pay more. It's the reason why we had yearly uh, increments of not less than 50%. So I'm saying that we duly understand and empathize with people. But I, largely, I was so happy the tangent honorable took now teaching us a few um, icons regarding energy supply, mm -hmm. but unfortunately landed where I believe I, I do not so much agree with him. I'm placing the difficulties on some irresponsibility I mean, in someone's administration, which is largely not the case because an irresponsible government will not keep your light on, an irresponsible government would not meet an energy sector which was, I mean, leaking $1 billion a year from PPPs that were, were signed, IPPs that were signed which those monies could have been used for something or something better in other areas. So okay. to the ordinary Ghanaian, to whoever, 
We are all going through it. We empathize with people. But the good thing is that, yes, this administration has at least afforded you the opportunity to have your lights on each and every day. And moving forward, not we every can, day. When you we keep can, saying we that, can I recount, find that problematic. We can recount. Because me, my lights keep going off can, every day. Can, I get lights We can off. recount all our difficulties and whatnot we've been through. What is important for us is what lies ahead and what we need to do moving forward. Because the automatic tariff adjustment then starts within this administration. I've given you some history, some pre um, precedents in the past where we have to pay more if you want to enjoy electricity. But moving on, we are in a crucial time. I mean, preparing for elections, and we rightly said two. Two months, six days into elections. And what are the parties proposing? What are candidates? Dr. Mohamed Bamiya is proposing is that it's about time we took a second look mm -hmm. at our power sector to making sure that we do something different for a different resource. So he's promised that yes, when given the opportunity, please let me learn. When given Doc. the opportunity, we are going to see an increment in power he generation. He has the opportunity now. You he, see, I find he, it very... He's, president. Uh, he's not the president, but he's the vice president. I'm sorry, but if you look at the reasons mm. the PRC is given for mm. why they've had to review mm. upwards the electricity mm. tariffs, they're saying that is the US... No, no, no. The US dollar Ghana City exchange. Mm -hmm. That alone mm. is problematic mm. because as a government, you should be able to manage mm. our exchange rates. No, no problem. And he is the head of the economic management team. The, the economic so if he says that wait, team, it's, when it's, it's, I become... It's a policy hold on, government. hold on, hold on. So if he says wait for me to become president mm. before, currently he's the head of the economic mm. management team. How are we stabilizing our city? And so that that will make it easier so for us to in, not pay extra like no, no the explanation we've gotten from Anna Mogawa. I understand, understand where, where we are coming from, but to help our viewers better understand issues, where in any regime, mm -hmm. I mean, even within our own country, within the Fourth Republic, where we've had any economic management team being the everyday micromanager or policy manager of any economy in this country. So if you said Dr. Baumia, Sorry, what? Dr. Baumia I didn't get that. is Can you head yeah, of I also the, economic, what he's the economic management team. He's the head. Then the, you are trying to say that Dr. Baumia is the one in charge. Sorry, I just want, I didn't get what you finances. said. I got confused there. So that's what I'm saying with for me. Uh -huh. Even within the, the country Ghana, not the Fourth Republic, mm -hmm. we've had an economic management team being responsible for the day-to-day -day management of the economy. To say that Dr. Baumia is head of the economic management team, for that matter, everything about the economy should be placed on his shoulders. So who we should can, manage the economy? We can speak of him being part of the government. So indeed, if there is anything, we expect Dr. Baumia to come with solutions, which he has already done, and there are evidence to such solutions. So what's but the job of the economic that, management but to say team? That, it's advisory. You know, it is you advisory. Know. It's advisory. It's okay. not responsible for the everyday management of the economy. You and I so know that. So whose job is, is it to manage the economy? The economy management, at best, the Ministry of Finance. Dr. Baumia, as a vice president, of course, he's told us that he can't run away from any difficulty. It's, the it's advisory. To when? It's advisory. To finance. That's the rule. It's advisory. <coughs> whether to cabinet, whether to finance, it's advisory. Did, and did Dr. Baumia know this and when he was asking the... <coughs> former vice president who mm. is of blessed memory. Mm. Did he know all this when he asked him those questions? You, you mean the questions he posed to the uh -huh. NDC? But of course. Did he know that when he was asking him in mm. particular to answer those questions? He, he was asking the NDC the questions. And no, he was, he was asked, asking asked him questions. in particular because he said he, he asked the was NDC, the head of the economic of, management team, so NDC, he should respond. He asked the NDC where in his statement did he say that the late vice president was the head of the economic management team? For that matter, so he why did he direct that question, those response. questions to him? You, you can, I can direct questions to energy and the NDC, to Honorable, for his expertise. Because he's an expert in energy, from at least the, the little he said on the show, I can direct to a question to the NDC and ask Honorable to come and explain to us. It doesn't mean the question is placed on the head of Honorable. He was asking the government. But of course, we know the Vice President has some economic and fin uh, financial background. So of course, it's just right to pinpoint someone to come and answer questions on behalf of the government. But we all know the role of economic management team. And even with that, we can see the handiwork of Dr. Baumia mm. on the economy. We had issues with fuel during the peak of our issues during COVID. Dr. Baumia has told you that he thought of a problem and he had solutions to the problem. We had gold for oil, gold for reserve. Today we can speak to how much in terms mm -hmm. of gold reserve we have at Bank of Ghana. We can speak to the effect of the gold for oil policy Dr. Baumia has introduced. So even in his role, as vice president and part of the economic management team, which is just an advisory body, okay. he's shown evidence to his work. And so moving forward, he's promised and he's going to do it. I that see. in order to bring down the quarterly review and the cost of electricity and power on the everyday Ghanaian, we need to look at things differently. Okay. And that is the promise of the 2,000 megawatts of solar panel that Tabaumia intends to bring to the country right. to right. cut the cost of electricity 
by 50%. Not to so digress. Yes. So you mean so that yes. those questions were supposed to be posed to the finance ministry? To be posed to the government. He posed the question to the government. But of course, there is someone within the government who has a cons and finance background. Which is That's, who? Who was the vice president then? It doesn't mean the question was placed on the head of the vice president then. <laughs> he was, he's an economic Doc, person. are you sure you understand what you're I saying? I understand what I'm saying. <laughs> I truly understand what I'm saying. He, so he, he, posed, he, he posed the question to the government. But he wanted a person with the economics background to answer those questions, pose, which was the I vice president. Why person. then should we not I ask the pose. person who was touted as the economic messiah? And he has told you. In and the MPP. And you his handiwork on the economy. Go for oil, go for reserve. During the peak of our problems. So when is good? So when changer. is good, Dr. So Baumia? But when is bad? You no say he was only advising. No one has said when is good. Dr. Baumia, when is bad, he's out of it. We are stating fact okay. that the economic management team is at best advisory, and that is the fact. And if you're on platforms, of course, as part of our mandate here, is to educate the general public All right. so that we don't stand anywhere to say that the economic management team of any administration is responsible for the day-to-day -day micromanagement of the economy. But as to the thing Dr. Baumia has done to point to his effects on the economy, I've already alluded the same. So, we for need, example... We need to look forward to what we can do to making sure that the problems the Ghanaian is going through is averted. So, just briefly, so the exchange rate problems that we, we have mm. with our city, which is going at 16 cities at the moment, mm. who's supposed to solve that? The, the government's supposed to look at ways to stabilize the currency. The government and, is and government broad. has done that. Which part government of the government? The government has done that. The government in general, headed by the president, of course, the bus talks to him, the president said that during his sonar. So, of course, we can mention the government and the president. So now it's the president. I haven't said the president. Oh, but it's not led by the president. It's, it's, you, okay, it's your, the your government. Is and of course, the back starts with the president. Okay, and I he understand. has accepted he's doing his sona. But at least, even with that, there's your been some up. management and there's been some stability with the exchange rate. <coughs> Assisting, no one is happy, no business person is happy. Okay. But of course, we can speak to the relative stability the currency is enjoying for business people to look into the future and make plans for what you, they need to do to help their businesses. Thank you. Yeah. Nanaya, but why are you laughing? Why? You want to shake his hand? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> why, why do you want to shake his hand? What's happening? <laughs> so, so interested. <laughs> you have to shake my hand. You know, as a young lady, I am go screw that. <laughs> oh, but he's allowed to also give his opinion <laughs> on, 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 on. What you want to say? Bella, let's be honest. Mm -hmm. When we say an advisory, just an advisory, mm. what do you mean by just an advisory? So, when on so if, if excuse me, please, 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 all right. We have the economic matters. We have governance and legal matters. We have security matters, social services, and we have infrastructure. Good. Now, these are ad hoc committees. Let me put it that way. These are standing committees per the procedures that are of cabinet. Now, we have the economic management team that actually sees to the day-to-day -day economic issues. So that is headed by the vice president. Mm. Before it moves to cabinet for further deliberations, the economic management team sits, it's like a sieve. They deal with the matters, put out recommendations, put out advices before it goes to cabinet. And so when issues from economic management teams get to cabinet, mm. you understand. At the economic management team, they are not all cabinet ministers. That is where you have expertise. And I'm going to say experts. So if you're talking about issues of finance, of money, fis uh, fiscals, that is where you have experts from the DOG, from other financial institutions, from other institutions coming to do their presentations. When you have issues of energy whatsoever, that is where they do all the brainstorming, all the deliberations, and come out with solid advices and recommendations for the, the cabinet to take decisions on. So if they do not do that work underground, if they are not able to put out recommendations, what happens? So we bring you recommendations for you to pick from. And that is why, that, because, it is, because of its crucial role, that is the reason why it's always headed by the vice president. Mm. It plays the most important role when it comes to economic matters. So you sit on a huge platform like TV3 and you tell us it's 
just an advisory. Any young Let's take it out. Bella. You understand? Bella, for, for, I had for, a lot of for, things for, to say for, when you were talking. I, 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 I didn't invoke his, him, please. His, his so what I'm flat trying flat to say is that... I'm record to have said what I'm saying. I'm repeating what his father said. He said the yes, same on, thing. On, 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 on you hold TV. on. Okay, you let on him. TV. When, when you have the chance, then yeah. you come in, please. At least I've been able to name the, 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 the committees of cabinet. Mm. At least I've been able to explain to you that before matters get there, there is a committee that deliberates on issues. Before it goes for that, it's it's a. I mean, honourable is a member of parliament. He knows before issues come to parliament from from the sector ministries through cabinet and it comes back through um, 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 select committees before it goes to the floor of parliament. Now ask honourable here that when matters or papers come before parliament, has it not already been worked on by the select committee that is responsible? Mm. So. Economic management team is like a select committee. Once it works on and goes to the floor of parliament, it's just for a few debates. How many papers have moved from select committees to, to the floor of parliament for debate has been kicked against? He's here. You should name it. And so you can't tell me that matters that go through economic management team, headed by Alaji, goes to Cabinet and yes, it's just an advisory thing, so it has no weight. Yeah, anyway, let's move on. Let's, let's come back to the, the, the conversation. I'll let you respond to it when it's your turn. And but. so, what we are talking about is the fact that the ordinary Ghanaian citizen is suffering. The teachers are suffering. Hairdressers are suffering. I'm even surprised you were able to fix your hair today. I did it myself this morning. Yes, because I knew there was no lights. Mm. And, and this should be made known. The ordinary Ghanaian is suffering. The PURC did not just increase tariffs. They give reasons mm -hmm. for the increment in the tariffs. One, inflation. Two, exchange rate. Mm -hmm. Three, the cost of production. Mm -hmm. That is, the cost of gas. Yeah. When the fundamentals are weak, the exchange rate would expose it. Well, <laughs> how are you releasing it to this? And the exchange rate, you know, I can't mm. So the fundamentals are weak. That's why we are where we are. The fundamentals are definitely weak. And of course, as Onam was saying, it is foreign currency we use in buying the gas for production, either by ECG or by um, um, Ghana Water. When you have bought the gas at $1 today, and the CD is 14 cities. And tomorrow you are going to buy gas at same one dollar. And the CD is 16 cities. Mm. Bella, who pays for the differentials? That two CD difference to add up to get that same dollar to buy that same amount of gas, who pays for it? <laughs> The utility providers, service providers, the, P, the, the Ghana Water and the VRAs and the ECGs, they are not a charity organization. Mm. They would definitely transfer the cost, the cost burden onto the final consumer. Yourself and myself are the final consumers. So we would bear the cost. Now, Honorable Mate, and it's true, it's clear. As part of the IMF conditionalities. So, if we had the fundamentals working right, and we have the exchange rate being stable enough, even if not coming down, we will not be where we are. There's a pure lack of leadership. Poor performance of the economic The if that's ECG. the case, let me ask you something. Because the first quarter, they reviewed downwards. And then what happened? Well, they have reviewed upwards. But I'm just saying that first quarter was reviewed downwards. What was the rate? We, we didn't hear you ratings? say. We didn't hear you say that. That's. You, I, I don't think I heard you praise government for reviewing ratings? downwards. Wait, I'm. I'm getting it for you. Hold on. I've written it down. So let me find it, and I'll get it for you. But it was just about a that's certain percentage. Percent, Hold on. Let me find it here. Um, where was it? Where was it? Where was it? 
Uh, you keep talking. I'll find it for you because I read it earlier. No, no, no. I read it earlier, so I know it's open. I'll just find it for you. Sometimes we should be be actually careful when we want to do certain comparison. Okay, so I found it now. Okay, good. It says that there will be an average reduction in electricity tariffs of 6.56% for residential consumers with a consumption bracket of 301 kilowatts per hour. For Lifeline, it was the same. It was mm -hmm. flat. They didn't increase it. Water as well was the same. Then they said tariff um, within 0 to 300 for non-residential class of consumers remained the same with no change in their rates. However, consumers with 301 kilowatts per hour and above will experience an average reduction of 4.98. Are you able to add that that was a peak of doing so? At the beginning of this year. The same time when they had reduced it. That was a peak of doing so. Carry on. That I'm, was I'm a peak of doing so. Mm. And they had actually, the providers had come out to say that we're not paying the real amount for power being, being provided. Mm. And they had also stated that as part of the issues that was actually causing Dumzo <coughs> was the issues of finance. They were not getting money to, to fuel their, their machines. So, Bella, let's, let's do the comparisons right. And they had to actually increase this number to meet this. That was a peak. And we see one of the reasons, and I think you've been monitoring the discussions after the young man um, at ECG resigned that one of the issues they are raising has to do with issues of finances. Mm. And, and Bella, let's be real. It is a poor management of the economy that is causing this. Yesterday on a platform, I, I, I mentioned that I was even expecting the, the increase in tariffs for water mm. to be higher. Why do I say this? Because of the issues of Galamse. Ghana Water is telling us, and they've, they've been drumming this, they've been beating these drums for, for months now, that it will get to a point where we would have to import water. Because the amount of money that is causing them to produce a glass clean of water, a, mm, a, clean, a, glass of water. a clean glass of water, mm. is four or five times the, the, the usual. They, would, they have had to change the chemicals they use in cleaning our water. And they themselves have come out to even say that the chemicals they are using, because of the amount, is a medical doctor, mm. the quantity they are using has dying effect on us. Yet we have a medical doctor like him go to stand on a platform and say that they won't stop Galamse. Now you are destroying our water bodies. Hold on. The Hold same on. water bodies that Ghana water is cleaning for us to drink. Ah, well, you're just uh, he's lying. Eh? You have a minute. Mm -hmm. Offense River Tano Bia. They are those same water bodies that Ghana water purifies for myself and you to drink. Bella, when was the last time you took a glass of pipeline water? In this okay. country. There will be nothing for this. <laughs> I don't even think I want to try it. Because the water I get in my house, it, honestly, is not clear. So there's no way I can drink it. And if, it and Ghana water yes. is... Do it on your body. And Do Ghana it water, on my body. Yes, we purify it before we even use it. The <laughs> brother be a kind of. <laughs> Ghana water is telling myself and you that even to get to that water that you don't want to drink, is causing them three, four, five times the usual amount. And they have attributed it to Galamse. I didn't say. You can read the statement by Ghana Water Company Limited. Mm. It's not the same water, but uh, the same water bodies they are feeding on. Okay, please learn from me, please. Your time is up. And so, if we have these causes, and we have a member of parliament who is a medical doctor, goes to stand on a political platform to make that statement, and he's still walking free. To tell Ghanaians that some group of persons have imported foreigners to destroy our water bodies within a span of three months. Mm, he said the NDC has brought Togolis to come and mine on the water bodies. That's why our so water it took bodies us are destroyed. Three months to destroy these water like, bodies like this. Why are you looking then at me? By the close of the year. <laughs> then by the close of the year, 
I do not think that there would be water anywhere All for right. us to bring. Let me bring Anna Bobawa in. Because now everybody's asking, what is the way forward? We keep talking about increments every month, but really, what is the solution? So I will, I will try to uh, provide some solutions. Mm. But let me, it is only fair that I'm given the right to reply a few things that came up. First, uh, my brother, and I, I kind of understand, I appreciate the challenge in which you find yourself in. It is difficult to defend the indefensible. And so sometimes when you come and you do this, you are doing a great job for yourself. It's just that at the end of the day, it just makes the case worse in, in an attempt to defend it. But that being said, look, you state and make a very emphatic statement that look, for seven years you've kept the lights on. I do not even want to go to the issue of whether we have doomed so or we don't have doomed so. I would wish that when you were making that point, you would have stated that exactly what single thing that you did to keep the lights on, apart from crippling our, uh, what you call it, our energy sector. Because currently, uh, Bella, you recall, and don't take my words, take the words of Boache uh, Jack, who became the first energy minister. He indicated that, look, when he was being vetted, he said, he said that, look, the total indebtedness in the energy sector was 2.4 billion. He himself opened his mouth and said it. Don't, so don't use my words. Indeed, it was the same figure that the NDC, <laughs> the NDC stated and the basis for which ESLA was introduced. Mm. And we said we're going to use five years to retire that debt, that legacy debt, whilst we also improve on the efficiency of the utilities within the sector. Bella, as we speak today, you remember that was how Ken Oforiata came and floated a six-year bond and then 10-year, uh, what do you call it, uh, ESLA bonds. Mm. As we speak today, the debt is no longer 2.4 billion. The it? money that we are supposed to do. Let me just take just the power subsector. Just the power subsector. I won't go to Tor. I won't go to Bost. I won't go to all those other areas. Just that alone. As a June, that we met the IPPs, they said it was a moving scale. The indebtedness that they have, that government has to pay them, is between 1.3 and 1.5 billion. Hmm. In fact, that is the reason why they have come into an agreement with the government of Ghana. That we know you cannot pay us all the money. You know they are also trying to go under uh, the debt restructuring. Mm -hmm. That at least guarantee forty-seven million dollars for us every month, and then the rest of the money uh, balance restructure it over the years. Even the forty-seven million dollars per the letter that was written by the Argon ECG boss and the PRC suggests that even the forty-seven million dollars government is not even meeting that. That is one cost. Two, if you sit down and then look at just on those bases. Go back to gas, the gas that is used in powering this. You see that uh, ENI, ENI is supposed to be giving us some volumes of gas. They have reduced their volumes. So you know why they have reduced their volumes? They have reduced their volumes because government is not paying up. Now the total indebtedness just to ENI on a rough figure, conservative figure, is almost around six hundred million dollars. Then you take them the gas that is being produced through the Jubilee Partners. And giving to, to Ghana gas, Ghana gas, also about six million, uh, six hundred million dollars. Mm -hmm. And I'm just talking of just the power, power. power I've not spoken about at all, because indeed, your goal for oil that you have said, the uh, uh, World Bank, as uh, the IMF has IMF. indicated, that first cap the allocation and gradually exit, because you are exposing the Bank of Ghana to a lot of risk. That is one thing. So when you use that as a basis for your 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 basis, oh, we are doing gold for oil, my brother. It is not a good point for you. Hold on, now you come in. You're gonna come there. Time. Now, you 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 uh, you go on to talk about uh, increments. That oh, in your government, uh, at least the people the increment in terms of the, uh, the tariffs. Mm -hmm. Look, Bella. When you are speaking, you speak within context, and I'll explain to you. The f issue about PRC was actually established under the Kufuor government, anyway. So that's how we decided to regulate the electricity uh, 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 market. Mm -hmm. So it is not under the NDC. It was under the Akufo government that that is so that every you always have what we call the major tariff review over four years. Mm -hmm. Then you have what we call the uh, up, yes the adjustment. tariff adjustment every quarter. Okay. So it was not under the NDC. However, even within that particular circumstance, you have a, an economy as we speak now that you have conspired to drive down almost 800,000 uh, Ghanaians into the poverty line. This is the situation you find yourself. Mm. You have an economy. That people who decided to say that, look, I am going to say 
uh, uh, save some money so that in future I can see how I can manage my life. You have decided to give them DD, uh, D, uh, mm -hmm. uh, DDEP, that, that uh, domestic, domestic debt uh, restructuring. Mm -hmm. You have done that. Bella, I have a friend who is a retiree, who is a, uh, how do you call it again, a cancer patient. His annual, uh, sorry, his monthly medical bills was around 3,000 Ghana CDs. Just about a year thereabout. Now, because, and you know, most of these medications are imported. You are a medical doctor. So, thanks be to God you are here. Now, he has to spend the upwards of 10,000 Ghana CDs for the same amount of medications he was buying just two years ago for about 3,000 Because Ghana of what? Exchange rate? Or the exchange rate. So, the medications are expensive. And he has to spend about 10,000 Ghana CDs just to stay alive. And this is the same person that you will get up. And meanwhile, this man has no access to his pensions because you have decided to, if the person has to go for it, now what it means is that you, 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 you have to have a haircut. Mm. And so you, you have a situation like this. And you are bold enough to sit on live TV, mm -hmm. to still justify and say that, oh, even though the thing has been, it has not been this. You must look at the situation of the people. I remember, and you, you, you talk about doing so, doing so, doing so, doing so, doing so. Oh, no, but you don't have much time. You know, so no, I, I agree. But you say you, you wanted me to give you the way forward. Uh -huh. You see, the first thing His Excellency John Draman Mahama indicated was that we have to take a second look at the whole tariff structure. You know, the tariff is a formula uh -huh. that they use. We need to look at the tariff structure to ensure that inefficiencies of utilities are not passed on to, what do you call it, consumers. Uh -huh. It is not my fault that if you are a generating plant and you are not able to improve on your efficiency, it should be my fault. It should be a liability that should be pushed on you. So it then, because you know, any year, any time they go for tariff reviews, one of the things they do is that uh, they tell government, they tell the PRC that, look, my revenue requirement is X. And so I am going to do X in terms of investments. Because we pay for investment. Mm. I'm going to invest X, Y, Z to ensure that I meet this particular level of efficiency. Now you go and you are not able to do it. I get the drift I'm trying to make. You are not able to meet that. I give you a typical example. A typical example is PRC even said it in their statement. ECG has been given a benchmark of a, a collection benchmark of 98%. Okay. So you need to ensure that if you're supposed to collect 100 Ghana CDs, at least collect 98 Ghana CDs. Two CDs will be born by we Ghanaians. However, as we speak now, in terms of their average collection since 2022, when they introduced the Hoptel platform, the JSA platform, they are doing an average of 43% collection. What His Excellency John Draman Mahama is saying is that we will restructure that. that. That should not be a burden for me to pay as a Ghanaian. It should, we should, it should be a penalty on the company. Okay. Is this I a new it. plan or he, he had had this plan in, in 2016? No, you see, you, see, no, you, see, you know one thing. We all learn from our mistakes. Okay. And as part of looking at the whole thing, we realize that it was one area that we, we need to look at. Utilities are beginning to be very. Look, companies equivalent to ECG in India and other things have all gone bankrupt. They've gone bankrupt because they cannot be in business in situations like this. Okay. And until we put pressure on them, they will not be able to fail. So that, 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 that's, that's I, what I wanted to bring Doc in. Okay, so that's okay. That's you, okay. You've that's mentioned okay. one, but mm. let me find out from that's Doc. Okay, that's okay. What's the way forward? What's the government of, doing of at the Nabu moment? Has said, the fact still remains that Ghanaians are not in perpetual darkness under this government. <laughs> we've had issues of power outages, which we've all experienced. But we can move out today and speak to the Ghanaian. What has the energy situation been comparing those two governments? Unfortunately, we have, to a large extent, I mean, chunk of the people who were within Mr. Mohammed's administration supporting him to become president again, so Ghanaian give him the nod. And the situation is that he subjected us to perpetual darkness for four good years. It's a fact. And, and the situation out. is that today we've had challenges, but we can go out and speak to the ordinary Ghanaian. And the ordinary Ghanaian will tell you, Bella, that the power situation, there is stability and relative stability within this administration. And the issue of whatever economic management team being an ad hoc committee if to cabinet and whatnot, your flag bearer is on record on UTV. He was interviewed and he told us that the economic management team does not manage the day-to-day -day activity of the economy and at best is advisory. It didn't come from me. So if you sit on a platform like this, again, to come and tell the whole world that it's the economic management team that makes proposal for only cabinet to go and say that, hey, 
management team says we should do A, B, C, D. Mm. Let it pass. Is that what you are telling us? I haven't seen that in the and, TV. When and did you say it? On new TV. Was it this year? I believe beginning of the year okay. with the lady who okay. hosts their morning show. Okay. He said it. And he has repeated the times with that number that the current management team is not responsible for the day-to-day -day management of the economy. You can't sit here and recreate the mandate of the current management team. No one can do that. Okay. It's a fact. And if we are talking about irresponsibility and inefficiency and incompetence with the current management team, your flag bearer was passed for six good years. Are you telling Ghanaians that your flag bearer, who you are championing to become president, was part and was part of the incompetence and irresponsibility? That's what you are telling us. That's not the case. Your flag bearer was part for six good years until he resigned to go and contest for the flag bearership of the party. So if there was any committee that was incompetent, that was irresponsible, your flag bearer was part for six good years. If that's the message you are channeling out to Ghanaians, that yes, go and vote for him, yet he was part of an incompetent bunch, then that's the case you are putting out. But he so, doesn't so he, agree with he, you. So he doesn't have a right to he speak clearly, up about it. I'm not saying that. I'm just reminding what the flag bearer said okay. and what he's saying. So and he's, he exited, put, he's, he's put everyone together. He's put everyone <laughs> together on that committee mm. to say that they are irresponsible and they are incompetent. So for six good years, your flag bearer was part of an incompetency, responsibility for six good years. And that the same person you are going now. out. Ah. So our, 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 our point. No, my point is he has our left point. now. Our point. Right now we want a solution. Our point. So we still our, have members on the team. Our what point. are they doing? Our point. So he sat to be part of the team that was incompetent for six years. At what point did he realize that? At what point did the special assistant realize that that committee was useless, in quote, and was irresponsible. At what point? So the man supervised, he was part of it for six good years. Are you telling Ghanaians that he's part of incompetency? But on the way forward, like the viewers are trying to understand, is to look at our energy sector again. And the best way to go to help any Ghanaian to bring the cost of electricity is to look beyond the box. And that's where Dr. Baumia comes in. Mm -hmm. And as, as already intimated, he's telling us, that when given the opportunity, oh. he is going to make sure that we have 2,000 megawatts of electricity through solar panel. That will help bring down the cost of electricity uh, by 50%. Is not coming again, no. By 50%. E excess capacity we are looking is not at again. cheaper on, means of electricity. <laughs> okay. We are looking at cheaper means of electricity. And we all know solar is cheaper. And we are looking in that direction. That we are going to add 2,000 megawatts of electricity. You're going to add, but the, going the increment 2, is happening 000, now. The I may not be able there, to survive until the, Dr. Baumia becomes you president. Isn't the if, president if, concerned if, at if, the if, moment? If, if you survived with 50% 50 50 increment yearly, if you survived with four years doom so, you survived this one. That's why I kicked them out. That's why I'm, I'm providing you better them solution. That's why because I'm not putting you in that for four years. you promised me as a Ghanaian that you were going to do better. That's why I'm not putting you in that for four years. So you don't have to tell me that I should wait and vote for you again before you fix the problem. That's why I'm not putting you in that for four years. That's why I've kept the lights on. Barring all the challenges. You say that's why my increment has been very gradual, very minute, such that it doesn't put too much pressure on your shoulder. But of course, we have to revisit the situation. Honorable said they are learning from their mistake. And to them, they are going to restructure and look at the payment structure and whatnot again. And within the seven years plus that I've given you the light, mm -hmm. within the seven years that my increment has been very minute, unlike the 50% in a yearly increment we were experiencing. I've improved the situation. But to make the situation better for you, Bella, is to look elsewhere, look at the solar panel situation, to making sure that we are seeing to cheaper means of generation to bring your cost down. Doc, and that is the future. So, I mean, it's not an excuse, but let's just say that mm. back in 2015, when mm. all this was happening, they were increasing mm. um, power. Mm. I probably could not afford it then. Mm. But if you look at it now, 850,000 more Ghanaians have been pushed below the poverty and line. The, the, Hold on, I'm just I, asking no, no, a question. No, you need to be fair. They've been pushed below the poverty Those line. Who have been so even as what, of now, what, they what, cannot what, even afford what, it any what, more than what, they could then. What indicator pushed those people to the below the line. What's indicator? What's indicator? Well, what, it's what your bad economic is? management. Bad economy. If you go and That's read the why. UNICEF report. What does it say? If you go and read the UNICEF report, uh -huh. they purely put it on the effect of the global economic situation we're having. For which reason? Yeah. Ghana is which, part of which, the course. Which one? UNICEF. UNICEF is it the COVID or the war? The, the, everything put together. No, I mean, a book, a book, a book everything book. put together occasioned the global economy. So, situation. because of the and wealth that, issues, 850,000 more people have been pushed that, honorable, below the poverty line. Here, honorable is here, he will tell us that it's not the creation of anyone. Uh -huh. Honorable tried to go on that, that tangent that we have conspired to bring 800,000 Ghanaians below the poverty line. Yet, honorable flag bearer will go to Harvard University and tell the whole world that the effect of COVID has affected emerging economies, including African economies. But you received a lot of money during COVID. We are telling you, you received that a lot of money. 
That's how a does that, how how does that you feed into your economy? About growth? three billion or more. How it's the same that money that you are getting growth? from the IMF how now that to show up your economy. Bella. Hold on, hold on. How does that feed into your economy? Hold on. I'll give you an analogy. That three billion and more that you received during COVID. Yes. You've gone back to the IMF to get that yes. three billion again yes. to fix your economy. So, so if you got it then, so why the, couldn't the you fix the economy? Why couldn't you fix so the situation the indicators then? We are all agreeing here is that it's not as a result of the president. It's not at a result of no, action or inaction yeah, no, who, of who, the who, vice president. I'm not agreeing. The it Auditor rather, General's report it, it gave us rather, details as to and, how and that money was spent, including the we fact that there are people even at the ministry. The hold on, line. hold on. I'm going to read that report for you. All right. I'll read it. But for that one alone, mm -hmm. we're even told that there were mm -hmm. people who were at the Ministry of Information mm -hmm. who paid themselves mm -hmm. Because of the work they were doing and for COVID. Meanwhile, for till date, it's, there are doctors, the frontline health workers who reason, still have not received their insurance. Doctors, till doctors, date. doctors today have had an improvement. You are a doctor. Yes. You should be speaking of service. for your yes, people. That's people. That's people. I've had that, lab technicians who have come on this today, show, sent text messages doctors, till the date. The doctors you are referring to today have improved condition of service today. I'm a doctor. And Did they, they receive you, their insurance? You promised them insurance. You are talking about doctors. No, I'm and talking about that, insurance during you are COVID. That. I know, I Whereas know those there are took, people within the ministry of information took, who are paying themselves. I know those who took some of the monies. I insurance. Know, I know those who took some of the money. I know, I know who people got, who have not received I know today. those who got In fact, the I'll monies. tell you what. I have colleagues Hold on. from Kolebu who got some of the money. I'll tell you what. Yes. There's one that complained bitterly. No problem. He found a way to leave the country because he was frustrated. If government owes anyone, government should be able... You did not pay when he contracted COVID. He had to pay himself. If government owes anyone, we are agreeing today that government should be able to pay people. But I'm saying that okay. I know people who have also been paid. And the issue of people who have been put below the poverty line, you've not given me the indicators pointing to what occasion that. And I'm saying that there are international reports. For which reason, Honorable Flag Bearer even went to Harvard okay. and said that the effect Bella. of COVID has uh, pushed over 4.5 million Africans, of, Africans including Ghanaians, so below the poverty line. So okay. why do we sit here? And when there are international reports, local reports, putting the effects of COVID and the global economic Let situation me. being the reason why people are put below the poverty line, and we sit here and we are what we are saying what the effects of people paying themselves at the ministry is the reason why people are below the poverty Let line. Let me read something we sit to here you and say that President April 17, has occasioned, 2024. Has occasioned mm -hmm. such difficulties. Let me read something clearly. to you. So a report by clearly. the Women in Informal Employment Globalizing and Organizing. Wego has revealed that 850,000 Ghanaians, mostly women, were pushed into extreme poverty due to a host of factors, and that included high levels of government debt and the closure of international markets. But it still says high level of government debt. So if you say that it's only international, indeed, if you have global factors, it says here that high no, levels no of government debt. Government has had debt over the years. But it's talking Since about extreme poverty within this now, period. Where in that, where in that, does it Let point me bring Nanaya. Yes, the president and the vice I president. Just saw that, where, no, where high levels that? of but, government debt. Uh, 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 Bella, uh, okay. 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 You, 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 you hold on. Let me let Nanaya no, come in. I just want to, okay. I just want to tell you something. Okay. I want to tell you something to go back and talk to your people. There's no way. It is not possible per our grade as we speak today and our demand level to introduce 2,000 it but has never been me. possible. No, I'm saying that. Okay. No, it has never been no, possible. No, I'm, I'm saying that. Please, please, please let, let's allow Nanaya to have his time. It's not possible. It's a stupid Gen proposal. Gen NHIS was Gentlemen, not please. It is a stupid you walk proposal. Out of government, you want to have a parliament. Please let's allow Nanaya to have his time. It's not possible with the NDC. Okay, okay. Let's have one more question. It's not possible with the NDC. Please let Nanaya come in. Okay, it's not possible with the NDC. Variability. Please, your microphones are off, so allow Nanaya. NHIS was not possible. Please, please carry on. Are you able to no, keep quiet? Please, please, please allow space. allow Nanaya to also have his time. Bella, let's let's let this be known clear. Alan Tremontin has <laughs> never said anywhere that he was not a part of the current government. And he never mentioned anywhere that he was not a part of the EMT. Mm. But it is also on record to have stated that he left the government. He resigned from the government. Two, Alan Chamantin was not the chairman of the economic management team. The chairman of every committee or any team has the responsibility to bear the consequences of whatever outcome the committee brings out. Mm. If the EMT has been a failure, it is not Alan Germantin. It is Alan Jibagunga. 
he was a chairman when you're when you're talking i was very quiet alaji baumia was a chairman and is the chairman of the economic management team let's be honest for once at least as young people if not for our own sake but for the fact that we would be alive in the next two three four years and that Ghanaians are watching. Alan did all he could as a minister for trade and industry. And for the records, if there has been any minister in this current administration who had performed, who had delivered, there will be no other than Alan John Kojuchamati. Internationally and locally. And we can mention them achievements from the AFCFTA through to the introduction of the automobile development policy that has brought about five or six huge auto manufacturing plants into Ghana. Throughout the, the country he has built over 67 business resource centers that is aimed to train young people, young entrepreneurs and to help expand business. The manner in which he was able to implement the 1D1F after a certain secretariat was created in the office of the president that over a year or two could not deliver even a single one until it was brought back to the table of Alan Jomati. This is on record. And I do not think that anybody, anybody in this current administration can deny the impact of Alan in any achievement of this government. There are still questions about one district, one factory, by the of way. Of course. There will and be, that was there led will be by questions, him, was it not? No, there will be questions. I, no, sorry, hold on, just, hold on. You know that the, the one district, one factory, actually, the secretariat actually was not in his office. It I'm was at the presidency. It was at okay. the presidency. So let us be clear on that. So we, we see, Alan is a fine gentleman. But if he was any like them, mm. I think Ghana would be somewhere else today. How? You sit no, here no, and just no, say no, no. anything you want on. to I'm say. I'm trying to understand what he means. <coughs> of course, you are here. If you say he's, he was like <laughs> them. Of course, if he will be talking like the way he sat here talking mm, and chanting. I will not, I will not, I will not allow the bella. Then okay. I will be elsewhere. Not, we, we need okay. to respect. We need to respect. Now, people let's, the let's, 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 and try to insult me on no, this No, I'm not insulting. I, I said that if he was to be let's speaking respect, like the way you are speaking. Let, let, let's respect ourselves. Let's respect ourselves. No, of plan. course. I'm saying okay. that. Respect if you yourself. If you don't respect me, respect viewers. Like you. And speak to viewers then well. Then it's okay. Respect viewers on the platform. Please. Respect your viewers. All right. I wasn't part of the Fair committee. Point. He's been there for six years. I understand. And you you so he's moving forward, Bella. He doesn't take any Fair we are point. management decisions. I understand. You need to respect people on the platform. I can only respond, but I respect myself. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So in, in dealing with the way forward, now if there is a, there, there's a publication by one of the media platforms online, Joy, Joy Online, um, 2nd December 2015, and there is this paragraph I would want to read. And this was stated by Alaj Baumia. He says that if this was a priority for government, the necessary allocations of resources would have been made to solve it. And he was talking about Dumsol. He was talking about energy challenges. Now, if it was a priority of government to deal with the issue of energy crisis we are in today, to ensure that businesses pay realistic tariffs and not burden businesses, government would put in measures to allocate resources to that effect. If it was a priority of government to help businesses to make a headway and not to make customers, ordinary citizens, suffer. We will not be making promises ahead of the future when we have the opportunity to help solve it now. If you have a plan of bringing in 2,000 megawatt solar in, well, on the 7th of January, as is being stated, because this one is, is president, mm. there is nothing wrong with putting in measures to bring that solar 
now. They say he's not the one in charge now. As so a president. Yes, one as a vice there's president. One there. There's one already there. You, so, you have a one. Oh, okay. let us put that yeah. on record. You now, have a floating one anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Can we just get that detail, if you don't mind? <laughs> Do we know where it is? No, so, uh, you know, I know where it's sorry, sorry. but it's not in Kalio. <laughs> that floating, which, so which uh, water, which water oh, is in Kalio? There's no water in Kalio. So no, there is a, that is there floating. Is, there is, okay. Okay. So don't there worry, don't worry. Let's go on, let's go on. There's a solar panel. There's a solar panel. Where? There's a solar panel. There's a solar panel. Where? Northern Ghana. There's a solar panel. But you don't know where exactly. There's a solar panel in Northern Ghana. And it's floating. There is a solar panel in Northern Ghana. It reminds me of the floating bridge. But it's not in Kalio. There is a solar panel in Northern Ghana. But you don't know where exactly. There's a solar panel in Northern Ghana. Okay, Nanaya. There's a solar panel in Northern Ghana. This is what Alan is proposing to the great transformation of life because you see we've come to a point where it's funny but not funny the ndc and the mpp would always be debating and arguing over who has done worse all right mm. and when it comes to making proposals as to how to solve the problems then we would find them always arguing but i would agree with me that one of the thick bases for where we are now has to do with finances and credit lines mm. with the suppliers of the the gas or fuel and the independent power suppliers and all of that so this is what alan is proposing he says that negotiate special credit lines for the supply of gas and crude from existing supply sources to optimize the use of existing thermal generation infrastructure now there are a lot of them but i just want to mention four which are very key it says that review the existing contractual agreements with independent power producers with the view of reducing the burden on government because government is already crying now government has proposed or mentioned they are going to pay them 47 million for mm -hmm. the cut and all of that but still is not meeting it now it means that there is something actually wrong with the contractual agreement so why don't we sit down around people and let the people understand the burdens government is going through and have a review of all of these contractual agreements. Mm. Now, it says that enhanced revenue collection by the ECG. Now, of course, if you go to Parliament, the Energy Select Committee, they will tell you, ECG tells you that one of the major problems they are facing is leakages. Okay. Both the power itself and their revenue collections. So, are we able to enhance that revenue collections so that we do not have a lot of waste in the system. I see. Now, the very last point, I, I mean, Please there are land for them, me because the very last our time is up. Mention is to reduce direct and indirect political interferences. And this is a major factor that is okay. affecting our energy sector. All right. There's so much political influence that people would even want to say they are resigning on personal grounds, Thank for personal you. reasons. And then when you are to delve deep into those personal reasons, you would end up at certain political interferences that I they see. Would want to resist. All right. Well, Edward Abadale says that if, it, if you like, go and bring your mama as your host. Still, MPP will win the election. We're not talking about winning elections here. We're talking about electricity and how we can find solutions um, to the problem that you and I face as Ghanaians because we're going to be paying a lot more um, at the moment. Good morning, Akosia. She says, oh, let us equal finish. Akosia uh, NYA, good morning. Uh, you mentioned doctors. He gives an explanation, then you move to insurance. I didn't move to insurance. So from the beginning, I mentioned that doctors had not received their insurance. So I wasn't talking about their general well-being. I was talking about the insurance package that was promised them during the COVID-19 period uh, for working as frontline health workers, which they still have not received. That's what I was referring to. It says you can't go and receive your salary from PCFMO. Don't worry, I'm receiving it here. It's fine. Also, good morning uh, to a number of my viewers. Um, in fact, you need to do more than 10,000. Okay, I'll skip that message as well. Both Kalio and Laura Solar Farms are white elephants. They don't have batteries to conserve the energy from the sun. Doomsa still persists in the Upper West region. That's Soli Sanuo Moses. So I think maybe he's referring to the solar year, or that's so different. So the point is that, the, the point I was just trying to make to him was that the floating one is not in Kalio. I, I was referring okay. to the one in Kalio. Kalio. Yeah. There's a floating bridge in my area. But we're not talking about floating bridge here. What are you talking about? Um, okay. Uh, Nanaya, you have done well. Hey, no, it's okay. Let me yeah, leave it true. there. You know what? Let me just leave the messages where they are because these messages, I don't want but, trouble. But, uh, you know, but third, gentlemen, we have to go. 3rd October is Alan Jomantin's birthday. Oh, is it? It's the day uh, for the uh, demonstration too. Yes. And then um, today, actually, today, 1st October, Alan would be having a stand, uh, the IEA, 
oh, uh, the I evening see. encounter. And so okay. we would we decided to attend and then speak to Ghanaians through okay. the platform. All right. Well, then, um, we're also looking forward to the live IPAC meeting that's going to happen. The NDC, I was hoping that I could hear from Honorable Bar, but there's no time. So all the best to all the parties. At least, uh, at least and one thing that we are happy is that it's going to be live. Yes. Yeah. So the issues will be raised there. Exactly. And, for us also. and you'll be there as well. Yeah, we have opportunity to see when allegations are made clearly. We need to buttress it. Mm with evidence uh -huh. and the issue of misreportage I and see. misinformation. All right. That exhibit says that, good meetings. morning, today is the birthday of Khadija to Abdullah of Asaman Kesi ICGC. She's a, a loyal viewer of your program. So happy birthday to you. But we're asking you to step into the world of Dewa 539 for your chance to win big with Dewa Direct and Dewa Chop Money. With Dewa Direct, dial star 446 hash, pick 1 to 39 and win 20 times, 40 times or 400 times your stake. And win cash every evening at 7 p.m. and on Sundays at 6 p.m. Early birds love Dewa Chop Money. At 10 a.m., dial star 446 hash, choose 1 to 39 and win 20 times, 40 times or 400 times your stake. Play at dewa-nla.com or dial star 446 hash. And if you need help, please call these numbers 055-6259-249 or 053-247-9879. Dewa Afa. This morning, I've been speaking to Dr. Ezekiel Ejekum of Bing, NPP National Communications team member. Did you get your insurance or you weren't a frontline worker? At that I, time. I, I, I wasn't you, part of the front. Oh, you weren't? Okay, all right. Um, also, um, in the studios, we've had Nanayao Sapong. He's a political aide to Alan Chemati of Movement for Change, item 13. Yeah. Edward, Honorable Edward Abambiri Bawa is the MP for Bongo constituency. And he's looking to retain his seat, I believe. Oh, you're not contesting, contesting this time this around. Time. You are tired. I'm not tired. All right. Okay. <laughs> anyway, we'll be back with more. And today, TV3 is celebrating 27 years um, of bringing you the best in content. And so stay with us. We have something exciting. Yes. Something exciting. Sponsored by Movement for Change. We'll be right back. <laughs>